Alright, the Oppo Find N2 Flip is the first foldable phone from Oppo that after years of concepts and prototypes have now hit the global market. It comes right out of the gates with a plethora of high-end specs and features that makes it a contender in the smartphone foldable market. Starting from the outside, the Oppo Find N2 Flip is equipped with a dual camera system made in collaboration with Hasselblad, a familiar and frequent collaborator on Oppo projects. The main camera is a 50 megapixel wide camera from Sony and the other camera is an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. Next to it is the big front facing screen that makes this phone so unique. With a 3.26 inch 720p display that can reach 800 nits of brightness, that actually makes using it useful. Opening it up, you greet it with a 6.8 inch AMOLED panel that has a crease that is surprisingly hard to find. You almost have to consciously find it in order to feel it. The screen itself is packed with the usual flagship features. An LTPO variable refresh rate panel that can go from 1 to 120Hz, and a peak brightness of 1200 nits in sunlight. The pre-installed screen protector doesn't even feel like it's there, and at the top is a 32 megapixel front-facing hole-punch camera. It also has a Full HD Plus resolution that is a well-balanced option and a confident spec that makes this screen flagship quality. On the inside, Oppo has decided to opt for a MediaTek Dimnesity 9000 Plus chip, an interesting choice considering most smartphone makers have been using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 or 2 like the Find X5 Pro. However, the benchmarks have proven that the Dimnesity chip isn't too far behind the 8 Gen 2, which is good to know. It comes with 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage as standard. The Oppo Find N2 Flip is equipped with a 4300mAh battery, and thanks to Oppo's Superbook technology, can reach 50% in just 23 minutes thanks to the 44W adapter included in the box. My first impressions of the Oppo Find N2 Flip was, whoa, this is different. Having tried the Z Flip 4 before, the Oppo Find N2 simply felt different. The front cover screen was actually useful and it makes the Find M2 Flip a much more unique phone in general. It's surprisingly easy to use one-handedly and has a variety of features that makes the user interaction so much better. Being able to launch the camera app and see yourself with the back camera is one of my favorite features. Glancing at notifications and checking quick info works so well at the same time. The performance was also quite surprising. For a phone that didn't have a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and comparing it to the Z Flip, the Find N2 is snappy. Snappy enough to surprise me, especially for a foldable phone, where performance is usually a compromise. But what caught my attention the most is that crease, or rather, lack of crease. I kept running my finger over the center of the phone and I couldn't believe it that sometimes I didn't even feel it. Compared to the Z Flip, the difference is tremendous. The Find N2 Flip screen's crease is so minimal that you could barely notice it. It also doesn't look too noticeable too, unless you look at it from a particular angle. Now let's take a quick look at the unboxing experience. Oppo is one of the rare companies to actually provide an unboxing experience worth taking a look at. In the age of iPhones and Samsung, they have drastically reduced the box size to only contain the phone. Oppo has gone above and beyond. Inside the box, you're greeted with a very fancy opening. The phone itself, a very nice 67 watt adapter, a USB A to C cable, and a hard plastic case with some paperwork. Now it's time for the cameras. At the press conference I attended, one of the key selling points of the Find N2 Flip was that they had made a flip phone with no compromises. A phone that excelled in every category, especially in the camera department. They are especially emphasizing on that Hasselblad collaboration. So here's what I found from the cameras. The best feature by far is the fact that you can use the main 50 megapixel camera for about everything. With the front cover screen, you can use the main camera and see yourself while using it. It's perfect for group photos, selfies, and vlogging. Starting with photos, the flip function makes taking unique angles quite easy and interesting. I played around with several position ideas and definitely makes things fun. It also has a hands-free selfie mode where if you raise your hand at the camera, it will automatically start a timer to take a photo, making group photos that much better. The main wide camera takes really solid images, and you can tell this is where they put most of the camera focus on. It has a huge dynamic range and great colors that look great in a range of environments. I would say that it sometimes over compresses and over sharpens some images, but in most cases it feels exactly like a camera you could expect from a flagship. There is no compromise in this area. 
there is some really nice depth of field in most photos and in the photos of the sky, the Find N2 makes a good job of balancing the shadows and lighting. When we take a look at videos, the Find N2 really shines. My favourite part about this phone by far is the fact that you can actually vlog with the phone. Using the main camera and being able to see yourself and position yourself is a lifesaver. It honestly makes using the Find N2 so fun to use. Unfortunately, you cannot film in 4K while using the front cover screen, but even in full HD, the video quality is surprisingly good. It has a nice natural depth of field, and the image isn't over sharpened. The colors look natural, and the dynamic range is also really wide. Overall, the video quality produced looks really natural and true to life. Now the area of concern for me is the stabilization, or lack of stabilization. The main camera has less than average stabilization from an almost flagship camera. It's good enough for panning and gentle walking, but as soon as you start running or moving normally, the amount of judder starts to become very unpleasant. On the spec sheet, it does state that none of the cameras equipped are capable of optical image stabilization. So be aware that you gotta have a steady hand. The selfie camera is nothing special. It just does the job and honestly, I don't think Oppo wants you to use it for taking photos or videos anyway. Its main purpose is to be able to let people see you while you prop up the phone in the video call. Other than that, it has zero stabilization and looks very average. Now, the ultra wide camera is my least favorite part of the camera system. For one reason, it sucks. In this age of smartphones, 8 megapixels is simply not gonna cut it. It's 2011 iPhone 4S camera technology. It just doesn't look anywhere as close as the main 50 megapixel camera. And honestly, while reviewing this phone, I could not find anywhere to actually use it. The only real reason to justify its existence is the fact that everyone else has at least two cameras. It doesn't look as cool without it. Other than that, it doesn't really make sense to me why they included two cameras with such a huge disparity. Now the next thing the Oppo said was not a compromise was performance. With a chipset that is different from the rest of the competition, I was a bit hesitant. But after a day of testing, it is clear that performance is not a compromise. The MediaTek 9000 Plus chip is snappy, quick and responsive, and I never experienced any lags or stutters. Oppo's advertising has missed out on one important aspect, which is gaming, and I can see why. It's not made for gaming. I tested out both S49 and Genshin Impact and came to the same conclusion. It's decent enough to play games smoothly, but try push it and it will start to heat up and drop frames. On S49, it showed a decent 60fps performance at high graphics, but the amount of heat produced was noticeable. But once I tried Genshin Impact, it became clear that the Fine N2 is not for mobile gaming. Genshin Impact was stuck at 30 frames per second and looked to be running at 720p. Even though it was mostly smooth, I did notice a few drop frames and a few stutters here and there, not to mention that the phone did heat up considerably. In conclusion, it was not a flagship gaming experience, and I don't think Oppo intended it to be anyway. Looking at the battery and charging speeds, Oppo has done a great job with a huge 4300mAh size battery and a huge 44W or 67W adapter in the box that can charge your phone to 50% in just 23 minutes. Oppo claims 20 hours of video streaming, 16 hours of social media, and 6 hours of video calling for its battery. In my experience, I felt that the battery lasted quite well, knowing that I was using it very heavily during my testing. Over 6 hours of downloading, installing, and testing the cameras, the Find N2 drained about 55%, which is not bad. Taking a look at how Oppo is navigating the screen issues with foldable phone technology is rather bold. Oppo is giving out a free warranty on every Find N2 flip in New Zealand, or two years internationally along with free screen protector replacements for life. This means that if your screen protector starts to bubble or crack, Oppo will replace it for free for the entirety of the device's life. This is as of now, so it remains to see if Oppo will keep doing this. But it does just show how confident Oppo is in the quality of its screen. Concerning the actual LCD panel itself, Oppo follows Samsung with a one-time $99 screen replacement in the case of damage. Now taking a look at pricing, Oppo is going ultra competitive by undercutting their biggest competitor, the Z Flip 4, by starting at around $100 cheaper than the Z Flip 4. The Oppo Find N2 Flip also comes with 256GB of storage, which is double the Z Flip 4, again undercutting the competition. And with Oppo, you can expect some deals to get some free earbuds or an Oppo band, as is common with most of their other products. But how does Oppo do this? Well, there are a few areas where I believe Oppo is kind of skipped. The first one is the lack of wireless charging. There is no wireless charging at all with the Find N2. But then again, Oppo has made up for this by including a very fast charger in the box, and with their SuperVook charging technology. The other areas that are slightly annoying is that the preview screen orientation isn't optimal. It doesn't always quite get the right way around, which is quite annoying at times. Lastly, it is hard to open. For some reason, the Find N2 doesn't quite flip as well as you would expect. I tried to open it using one hand, and it is very difficult. Most of the time, you have to use two hands to open up fully properly. 
In conclusion, Oppo has made a very compelling phone that I think will be a worthy competitor and a contender in the affordable market. There are still some setbacks, for example, the lack of gaming capabilities, the way that it heats up so quickly, and the fact that there's no wireless charging. However, out of all of the affordable phones in the market right now, I would still recommend the Oppo Find N2 Flip, simply because it offers the best seamless and refined experience, along with better value in my opinion. From a huge front cover screen to excellent snappy performance, an excellent 50 megapixel camera, a vibrant 120Hz display, and good battery, the Oppo Find N2 Flip sets a new benchmark for affordable phones and is yet to see whether other competitors can make a more compelling option than the one that Oppo has to offer right now. Thanks for watching my review and I'll see you in the next video.